So I'll do one more thing on alloy just to kind of show you how that alloy just works again. Because I think seeing it and understanding it is really, really important to know how it differs from mixing it. And I think this time I'll use, uh, I'll use mine, I think. Very hard, I don't have a favorite yet because the, the alloys are very, very unique. In fact, on my swatches, you'll see the true metallics back here just so you can see the colors. Remember when I said they weren't designed to be used by themselves? So it's not the ideal swatch, right? So when I touch this, I'm gonna get that bloom because I didn't use any inks with it. But just so you can see the color, so you can see gilded, just a beautiful, beautiful gold. You can see sterling. Sterling is just almost a, just a reflective mirrored silver. So awesome. You can see mined, that's that wonderful copper color. And it's not nearly as orange or rosy as the copper mixative. One of my favorites, this is foundry. So foundry is like this steel color. It's kind of a combo of silver and gold, almost like a platinum, I think if you will. And then we have statue, which is just a really nice bronze, kind of a dirty gold. And you can still mix your alloys as well. If you wanted, you know, you wanted so gilded to have, yeah, have that. a little dirt. So there's nothing wrong with mixing these, but, but understanding that these are going to clump up, that's what makes it really cool. I'm gonna do something kind of patina-ish. We're gonna go back to this. And I just got a dropper bottle. I, gosh, I don't know where you get one of these. Where do you get one of these? Everyone asks. I mean, it's just glass, but I would imagine it's somewhere. Yeah, I would think it's like an essential oil kind of thing. I didn't think it was that special, but in Facebook Live, everyone's like, where do you get the bottle? Just a pharmacy. Yeah, pharmacy. It's just, I like it because I think the dropper allows me to control how much I put. I don't want to pour it on, and I certainly don't want to hose the whole thing with alcohol because I want to, I want to move it, right? So that's what I chose to do. I'm going to throw on some color. Again, drip some on and just seeing how it sits I I find that really interesting when I first started working with this of how that isopropyl just kind of sits with that ink just creates kind of a weird little gel so first thing I want to do is just move kind of see what I get it's always fascinating how that color is it's more my palette more my speed there we are mm, just feel like a little scientist <laughs> it does right Wow. Some of that in there. Oh, look at that. Oh. Right? And of course, I can't wait to use it with distress. Who am I kidding? I mean, I've only used it with alcohol ink because, like, stay in your lane. That's kind of what I've been doing. But I'm already thinking I can't wait to use it with oxide and distress ink. And because I've never done that with ink, I've never thought to move distress in a different way other than a blending tool or a spray bottle, so I can't wait to see what that does. So now we're gonna use our alloy. And again, if you could probably do half a drop, that would be best for something small, because it's pretty intense. But yeah, I think I'm gonna throw in a little bit of, I'm gonna throw some Laguna on there. Again, I'll do some blending solution, because at some point that has to come in to the mix. So, it's a good, good way to move that around. But once that goes, like you really see the power of that alloy and how that just breaks out. And I love the subtlety of it too. I like the fact that it kind of stays clumpy. That half a drop worked. I was impressed with myself. Wow, because I thought the last one had a little too much on it. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, really, you can just let that dry and look at that background. You could still stamp on it. You know, one thing I learned from Dina Wakely, if you haven't watched Dina demo, watch her awesome artist is like embrace the space you know I'm a full-on flood with color but embracing the space is very interesting when I see alcohol ink because it just brings so much more depth to what you're doing especially if you're doing this kind of painting I would say is that it really allows you to kind of see all the other texture I would normally splatter this but one thing I learned also is you need a splatter box if you're gonna splatter alcohol ink yeah and I didn't bring it and Ted doesn't have one so you definitely want to splatter it in a box because if alcohol ink goes on your phone, your windows, your walls, like, there it is. So, I'm just gonna try this. Yes. Does it always sit on top of the paint? Yes. Does it pull the paint through? No, no, because it's a leafing metallic, so it has a barrier. It won't allow the color to sit on top of it. Yep. So you could seal this and then tint it again, right. but anything that you put, that metallic is always gonna, it's basically gonna swallow the color. Yeah. 
because it's really designed to sit. Now, if you wanted it to mix with the color, you would use a mixative because we still have mixatives because they still have a place. So if you want those metallic undertones with your color, that's what a mixative is going to do. It's going to allow you to mix. And then, of course, we have alcohol pearls, which would actually pearlize the color. So it's really amazing how the alcohol ink world has grown with so many different ingredients instead of just a color of ink now. So I think just having different ways that we can apply these to create some little art pieces, I definitely feel that, and look at that one. That's when I was like, how much is too much? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of dig it. I love yeah. it. I really like how that looked. I just wanted to see, yeah, see like how much, yeah, I wanted to see how much I can, <laughs> I can break that down. But this one's still bonded because I used a lot of blending solution. So I knew I had a lot of alloy on there. I'm like, I better put something on to, to help bind it. But yeah, you know, I'll pass these around. Take a look at them because, uh, you know, I know when I demo, I see it with my eyes with the light. But if you're taking videos or whatever, like you need to see, like it's unbelievable how shiny that metallic is. It's completely different. It just has a whole different vibe. So this you can see is splattered. So these dots are not from a spray because you saw when I sprayed it was a light mist. So what I use for this is I'll take my splatter brush. So I'll take this guy. So the splatter brush is just a plastic bristled brush. I'll dip it in alcohol and then I'll just stand back and just do this and you get these really big splashes that create just more of those dots that a mist wouldn't do. Because by the time you spray it this much, you'd be by my color. Yeah, so this just allows you to just kind of splatter it around. But if you don't have anything behind it, you'll splatter everything else in your path. Yeah, that's what I do. Cool, so any questions on any of this? Thanks for watching. Be sure to give our video a thumbs up and subscribe to Scrap Time videos for all the Creative Asian 2020 coverage.